Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video that we made for you. In today's video, we are going to take a look at another one of Universal Blues ecosystem distros. Uh, they have Aurora, they have Bazite, they have Bluefin, and they have Ucor, which is their server instance. We're going to be taking a look at Bluefin today, which is the GNOME variant. Aurora is a KDE variant, and Bazite is like the SteamOS kind of variant. Uh, it uses like a Steam, but it puts it in like a SteamOS format, so it's great for gaming. Either way, their ecosystems are fantastic. Universal Blue is based off of Fedora's Silver Blue Immutable Distribution. So let's go ahead and roll our intro, and then we'll take a deep dive into looking at the distro. Okay, so here we are at the desktop, uh, the login actually. I just installed it and I rebooted and this is where we're at. Now, I will tell you one thing about the install. When it comes to doing the install for any of these immutable type distributions, the, distal, the install can be a little bit more lengthier than your standard Linux uh, desktop installations. And it's because they have to download the image and then install the image. So it's not extracting packages and install them as it goes. It's actually doing a full download of the actual desktop image, and then it installs it. We are greeted with this. Now, one of the things that I find that I do not like as much as I got, I mean, I got to knock something. I mean, I got to be honest here. I am not a big fan of opting out of things you should only be able to opt into things if you want and privacy is one of those things i do believe that this part right here should not be enabled right off the bat location services that's not one that you should be opting out of you need to be opting into that one so i'm going to take that off and then we're going to hit next then third party repositories we're definitely going to enable those because you're going to need some codecs and that kind of stuff so we're going to hit that and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to connect our accounts online. Well, you know what, man? I'm not big into that either uh, for these purposes. I mean, if it's my daily distro that I'm going to be driving, that might be a little different. Might connect a Google account or here or something like that, a next cloud account, that kind of stuff, but definitely not a Microsoft. Don't have one. Skip. And then about me. So this is where we're going to set it up. We're going to say uh, the... Linux tube. Whoa. I did something wrong here. Did I hit? Oh, I did. I, I capitalize, hit the caps lock. There we go. That's much better. And then we're going to shorten the username. Did that again. To that. And then if you have an actual Fedora log, uh, enterprise uh, account, you can log in right here. For your enterprise account down here at the bottom but i do not so i'm going to hit click next our password we're going to type in something hella strong people will never guess that it's absolutely one two three four and then we're going to click all done so now we're going to start using fedora linux and so now it's going to set things up in the background and it's going to do what it does uh it takes normally a few seconds but first thing that i want to do is i want to set the displays to uh, the 1920 by 1080 right here go to this right click on it go to display settings and it's going to open up our properties our resolution we're going to change it right here uh, 1920 by 1080 we're going to hit apply and we're going to definitely keep these changes now the next thing we're going to do is fix this god awful color change background here we go this should get us right here right click onto it and yes yeah, see here we go so we click the dark. I'm so used to, to the KDE. When, when I do desktop environments, I always do like KDE because it's, you know, it's my other one that I used to go to before I became a window manager guy. So I'm used to KDE going to appearance and, and the settings there, whereas here, I don't know. It was, that's wild. So here we go. I finally set it to dark. Everything's good. We're happy. Uh, well, let's go back here. Actually, I do believe if you go here to settings, 
it's right there. You can change the backgrounds, which is really nice because these double ones are the light and the dark themed ones. Uh, any ones that are split like that means that they have a double theme to it, a light theme and a dark theme. So it goes well with your things. But these are the backgrounds that they have in there. So I, I like this one that we have right here. This is the standard blue for one. This is pretty good. So now this is GNOME 46 at its best. What I will tell you about this that I would like to kind of take a second to let you know, being that it's immutable, uh, the, th the ways to install packages are through the software center. Uh, also, the RPM Austria, which will be a layered package uh, system, which it's basically it adds a layer of the package that you want on or any packages that are added via Aust RPM Austri, which follows the syntax of the DNF install. So it'd be RPM dash Austri install said name package. And then it will just install it as a layer of uh, above the actual core OS. Nothing touches the core OS because that makes it immutable. And then of course they've got UJust which will install Homebrew which you can install Mac applications uh, that way and I guess cross-platform ones as well that way uh, in there. And then of course there's always flat packs which is what they want you to use. So let's go ahead and back look at this. Okay so now we're back at it and so up in the left hand corner, just so you know, they've put like a whisker menu down here, which is uh, for your app grid, which they've customized. And this is all that's in here. I love the fact that it's lightweight. It has very few apps in here. These are all the apps that so far it has. Anything else you install yourself. Anything to mention is BoxBuddy. Now, BoxBuddy is like a Docker container uh, manager, kind of like flat seal, but for Docker containers. And uh, if you want to add a Docker container, you just simply click the plus button here. And then right here, for the image that you want to install, you can go through Alma, Alpine, whatever. Or you can search, like, say, Gen 2. And there's your Gen 2 Docker I.O. right there that you can download and install. So that is how you do it. It's just that simple. You just click on it, create. It sets it up, creates it for you. It's all done for you in the background. A beautiful little tool to have there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the app grid again. And then we're going to look, uh, they got weather, they got maps. They got the standard, typical, most of your GNOME things only just streamlined down to essential packages, so to speak. Uh, they've got the GNOME extensions because that is how they've achieved all of this customization. If you don't know what GNOME, exten GNOME extensions is by now, well, you might as well do a little Google search because I'm not going to go into depth on that. They have game utilities right here, which basically it's an input remapper so that you can remap like your game controller keys. That's basically what that is. As far as disk utilities are concerned, they have a couple in here that are nice to mention. One is flat sealed. That's the one that allows you to change your permissions for any flat packs that you have installed on your system. And then warehouse. Warehouse is a flat pack uh, manager letting you do things such as if you click on here you could uh manage like the snapshot you can downgrade them uh you can do uh disable updates for them if you want to freeze them or whatever um it does a little bit less than flat seal but it's still one of those managers that, that is, is actually pretty nice as well so there is that so those are the ones to mention you could also get to your app grid right here with the little app thing on the on the dash to dock which is an extension that they've enabled so as far as that is concerned um there's warehouse and you've got the extension manager and then they've got gnome tweaks here if you open up gnome tweaks once again, it lets you adjust, you know, fonts, appearance, sound, all those good things. So also the way that windows work, I do believe you can. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, I think you can assign the window action key right here. Uh, it's, it, you can tweak it out just a little bit. That's how you do a lot of your customization for GNOME is through GNOME tweaks and GNOME extensions. So there is a look at that. And that I do believe, let's go back just to make sure, are any of the ones that you actually, uh, oh, no, sorry, 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 two, two right here. Uh, Taxis, which is their terminal that they preferred, as you can see, they put it down in the, in the da dash to dock, which has, like I said, you just right here, which will go over in just a little bit uh, to show you um, you dust and how you can use it uh and then of course it's just their standard terminal and then the other one that i want to show you was solar solar for those that don't know if you have a logitech mouse 
this is the tool that you want to use to remap any keys if it can be remapped like your trackballs that kind of stuff so that is an app to look at it basically will have the usb right here it'll show the mouse that you have that's connected and then you can remap the keys so so that those are all the apps really noteworthy of mentioning you got your app launcher in the left corner and then over on the right hand side is your system notification squash tray which has your volume has your power session when you click on it all that good stuff also your settings you can access through it as well and then uh, your notification for your network also right here you can take a screenshot um, you can do uh, gnome connect which is kind of like your uh, your KDE connect and then of course you got your power mode you could toggle between power saver and balanced so uh, that that is a look at the that menu so now let's go take a look at Pataxis here make this bigger and one of the cool things is you just uh, so you just brew is to install homebrew okay but let's look at you just choose because you just choose right here if you copy this paste this in and hit enter it's going to give you a list of all the commands like you can set the transparency for taxes um you could do o o olama which is uh it's an instance container to detect hardware for whatever you're running um uh, you can do incus you can install different things you can install brew you can install uh distro box new you can do assemble you can enter dev mode you can figure your shell um what's nice too is this this is where the so these people have paid attention to everything and i'll show you the web page because if they paid attention to certain details on the web page you know how complete and thorough the distros are and one of the things is is a lot of people uh, they, they claim on the web page to have the best nvidia support well not the best but they have nvidia support and here's where they have it with this, you can configure NVIDIA Optimus, which is for hybrid graphics, and even your NVIDIA card right here. Also, Broadcom. That's a big problem with a lot of distributions is Broadcom Wi-Fi. They have it right here to help you fix it. Isn't that awesome? That is so cool. Also, you got a cleaner that'll clean your system. Uh, there's lots of cool things in here that you could do. BIOS, you can even do benchmarks. I mean, it, it's it's awesome. You just is a is a pretty powerful, cool little tool. Um, now, one of the things that that I really, really, really like is the simplicity and the the sleekness and the lightweightness of this distribution. Uh, it is a beautiful distribution, well done. And so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at their web page, like I said, and we're going to navigate to the Silver Blue web page. We'll open up Firefox, and of course we're going to have to do, because it's the first time, the whole little setup thing. We're going to skip this step, and we're going to skip that step as well, because we don't need any of this garbage. And I'm not going to personalize it right now, and we're going to start browsing. So we're going to make this larger, and then we're going to go to Bluefin, the next generation of Linux. Now, this is very beautiful. This is their web page, as you can see. Uh, if you go to the bottom, uh, let's go to the bottom uh, to get Bluefin. Wait. So to try right here where it says try bluefin this is where you go to download the image that you need so you got to select your hardware so you click on here and now they have laptops and desktops right that you can do so they got the framework laptop surface laptop asus laptop and then other laptops we're going to do desktop uh select am i a developer see this is the detail i'm talking about if i click yes then i'm going to get a bunch of development tools installed in there i don't know if it's a Docker containers or anything like that added extra that they do, but you know, like VS Codium will probably be there, you know, d different text editors, that kind of stuff. I'm going to collect no. And then um, what is the vendor of your primary GPU? This is where you specifically, so you get an image specific to whatever GPU it is that you have. I, I have an AMD, so I click AMD and then now you can download the ISO right here. Click on that and then it's going to want to save it. I'm going to hit cancel on that, but that's legitimately, that's how easy it is to get the ISO for Bluefin. Now, guys, I got to tell you something. I love this distribution. I believe that I could recommend this distribution to a new to Linux user. It's easy to set up. 
as far as installing and setting it up. It doesn't come with a bunch of stuff loaded out of the bat, so you can literally install what it is that you need, whatever it is that you like. You can, you know, Google things that you need to install. Go to the, the software center that they have there, uh, the GNOME software center, and install whatever you want through Google searches there. And it automatically defaults to flat pack install first. Honestly, it's, it's foolproof. You can't really break it because you can't access the core system files because it's immutable. And, and so if you're new to Linux, it's guaranteed to be rock solid and safe. And dare I say, I like it a little bit better than I like Nix OS because of it's easy to set up. It's stable as hell. And it's extremely new to Linux user friendly. So guys, once you go download it, Give it a shot. Throw it in a VM or throw it on bare metal. I put Aurora on my laptop that's right behind me, and I'm I love it. It it's it's a great distribution. Bluefin is just a known variant of Universal Blue. Universal Blue is fantastic. Uh, we're gonna take a look at Bazite next in the series here. So leave a thumbs up, guys, if you like this video, or if you don't like it, leave a thumbs up. That's cool. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. And as always, I will tell you, you keep doing what you do. Keep on Linux and stay blessed, stay safe, be happy. And above all, I will see you in the very next one. Universal blue for the win. L literally. <laughs>